Yo, look at what I just got in the mail. All right, let's see what's inside. Now, of course, I'm joking, already know what's inside. You saw in the title, but let's unbox this thing. And that's crazy, it looks so much bigger because I have a, the Pro instead of the Pro Max. Let's pull those super satisfying tabs. Oh, that looks nice. Well, of course, as you can see, I've got the black titanium one. Let's just see what else is in this box here real quick. So nowadays, this is pretty simple with Apple. You just got the little thingy to, the little tool to remove the SIM card. And then you got the cable, which this cable actually is pretty nice. I like the quality, super nice. Yeah, so that's all you got. And then, you know, paperwork and all that shit. Not even stickers anymore, bro. Never use the stickers anyway, so I don't really care. But we're here for the main thing anyway. And can't deny this thing is satisfying as hell. And just looking at this screen, this is super cool. It's a lot bigger than mine, of course, because it's a Max, but surprisingly, it does not feel a lot bigger like that in my hands. It's really, really cool. Like I was saying, I got the, um, the black titanium because I really like the aesthetic of like black accessories and the color looks really similar to my iPhone 13 Pro. My girlfriend has the 15 Pro Max and I also have my MacBook Pro in black that I'm gonna put it here next to it in a, just in a minute to compare. Yeah, just right at the, the box, this thing looks and feels really, really good. Uh, I noticed here that the, um, the metal around is, is a bit texture instead of mine is more like polished and uh, and super smooth this one has a bit more texture and i feel like it even is a bit more rounded um, so it feels a bit more comfortable in the hand which is just super cool all right let's turn it on the classic hello in several languages as the welcome screen for apple well, it's really cool, you can set the appearance in terms of the size of the stuff. So I'm gonna set this up and I'll come back real quick for us to talk about why did I choose this and if you should too. And I'll show you my upgrade timeline. Let's go. All right, finally got this thing set up. I had a few issues when trying to set up uh, through my other iPhone, the 13 Pro, because the Face ID wasn't working. Actually, it hasn't been working for over a year now, but I was able to do it through the iCloud backup and now everything's ready to go. So this is the actual first time that I go for a Pro Max model because normally I just go for the Pro for the convenience because it's smaller. But because I want to shoot more things of this like BTS of my productions and actually full productions, I want more real estate on the, on the, on the screen when using apps like the Blackmagic camera or the Final Cut camera. So this is the reason why I went with this one. So before we dive into this thing, let me tell you a little bit about my upgrade timeline. I started with the iPhone 6S that came out in 2016 and had one camera, the home button fingerprint to unlock and whatever else. Super thin, rounded corners, metal back and with these dividing lines, the top and the bottom. I really liked this phone and I used it for years, created a bunch of cool memories and served me well until the iPhone XR came out and I decided to upgrade. Now this was a big upgrade when it comes to design, it was still rounded edge and only one camera but now the back was made out of glass instead of metal. The home button was gone which made it cleaner and the front facing camera was now on a notch integrated with the screen instead of the big bezel like the 6S which made the screen bigger and not only that but they had a cool collab that brought us this red color. And that's the one I went for. I don't even remember what was the upgrade when it comes to the camera. I used this phone and was happy with it for years until 2021 when the 13 Pro came out. 
This was by far the biggest upgrade I have ever experienced with an iPhone. The edges were not rounded anymore, the glass back was now matte in texture instead of smooth, shiny glass. And the biggest change was the number of cameras that tripled. This has been my one phone and workhorse ever since. I shot some beautiful videos and photos on it. I've used it to script videos, take notes and ideas, watch videos, edit, research and everything in between. I've been very satisfied with the performance of this phone, so I've never felt the need to upgrade. I did have a problem, my face ID for this phone has been super super bad for the past year, so it's basically not working and it gave me a lot of problems setting up this phone. Bro, but anyway, apart from that, all good. So like I said, I never felt the need to upgrade until now. I'm sure by now you're thinking that's cool and all, but why are you telling us all this backstory about your upgrade timeline? Well, because I wanted to show you how I don't believe that upgrading your iPhone every year is something that you should do. I don't think that every year they come out with something worth upgrading to. I believe that you should only upgrade when it really makes sense to you and when the new features on the new models are gonna be really helpful for you and help improve your work and usability. Here's where the iPhone 16 Pro Max comes in. You know, everybody has been complaining about how Apple made the whole launch event around Apple intelligence only to release the phone without it. And I understand it completely and I'm sure that when it rolls out it's gonna be super helpful. But let's talk about what the real reason to upgrade for me. The camera. The ultra wide and main camera are now 48 megapixels instead of 12 megapixels, which will capture and retain a lot more detail and information. The telephoto remains 12 megapixel though. You now have 0.5x, 1x, 2x, and 5 instead of just 1, 2, and 3x. So that extra zoom range will allow you to get closer to things that are far away and get a huge background compression when you use it to shoot with the subject in frame. You can now record 4K up to 120 frames per second, which is great when you want to really slow down and put emphasis in a moment. And you can now use Log directly from a camera app if you don't want to use a third-party app like Blackmagic Camera or Final Cut Camera. They also introduced what they call the Camera Control, which essentially is a camera shutter button with a bunch of other functionalities like changing the focal length, zoom, exposure, depth and much more. And it does that by being tactile and having different levels of pressure. So you can do things like a half press, a double half press, a full press, or a press and hold to take burst photos and instant videos, just to name a few. Now let's talk about this color. Here we have my 13 Pro, my girlfriend's 15 Pro Max, the new 16 Pro Max, and my MacBook Pro all in their black configuration from left to right. As you're probably used to with Apple by now, none of these are actually black, they're just different shades of gray. Beautiful, sleek, even darker shade of gray, but it's still gray. Now, I didn't capture very well in this video here, but the side panels do get fairly greasy very fast, so that's something to take note. But apart from that, I'm really digging this color. Okay, so should you buy this phone? I'd say if you're on the 14 Pro and the 13 Pro below, maybe this could be a good choice for you. But if in the 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, I'd definitely say skip this one and wait for a further and bigger upgrade because I don't think it's gonna be worth it unless you know you are a big channel that reviews tech and maybe you're a, you're a content creator that really uses your phone for your work. So this then could be a great upgrade for you. But regular people and people that already have the 15, I just say skip it. You'll be fine with the 15, more than fine actually. So just looking at this thing here right now and very briefly testing the camera control button, I'd say that some of my favorite features will actually be the camera control button after I get the hang of it and I use it more. Also, the fact that USB-C finally, so I'm finally letting the lightning cable behind and um, I'm gonna be using the USB-C so almost all my device is gonna be USB-C. Definitely the biggest screen, this is gonna be super cool. The dynamic island, so like the notch, so you have more real estate as well so the notch doesn't go all the way up to the, to the top of the screen. 
like my 13 Pro, that's going to be super cool as well. Of course, the camera quality and, the, and the, the more options that you have with your camera. And honestly, I'm going to be super interested as well to use the voice recorders and, and to, to use this phone when talking to, especially on BTS, I might not even need to plug an external mic to this phone because it seems like what they did with the audio is super super good so i'm gonna be testing that i really hope that's gonna be sick because then it's gonna make my my bts shooting faster and i won't have to be rigging myself with audio and all that so i'm super excited for that as well and of course back to the camera that 4k 120 honestly i don't really use a lot of 4k on even on my fx3 but i will be using more and i'm definitely gonna make some videos around this so i'm gonna shoot 4k 120 in this phone and on my fx3 and i'm gonna see how they compare and i'm gonna be bringing this video to you guys very soon now let me know what do you think about this phone and which one do you have would you upgrade to this one would you wait for the next one what are your thoughts on this drop a comment and let's talk about it now before you leave you should watch this video right here and thank you for watching. Love you. Bye.